Hello traders and welcome to another edition of Trading Blunders and How to Avoid Them. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host with DayTradingUniversity.com. Hello traders, Ken Calhoun here. One common mistake or blunder that I see traders make all the time is trade on low volatility or trade in range chart patterns. One of the key strategies is simply to only trade instruments that are outside of the previous day's range. For example, here's one CRZO that should not be traded because it's inside previous day's range. Similarly, even if you see something that looks like a good strong initial breakout on an in range day, those will frequently stall out and cause a false breakout and expensive stop. It's much better to not trade these types of charts and instead to focus your trading energy on ones like this one that has a good two day high breakout continuation entering roughly 35 cents or so above previous day's high for continuation plays. Similarly, for fellow currency traders, one area that a lot of folks get into trouble in is they will overtrade inside range charts like this example of the US dollar to the Japanese yen. This is a seven day forex chart. This is the one I use 60 minute. You can see here one confirming negative reason not to trade this is the red ADX or average directional index line is way down here under 2025. It's in fact way down here near 10. So this is not one that we'd want to trade. Instead, a better chart to look at for trading right now would be our dollar to the Swiss franc because you can see here that it is broken out, at least in today's action so far, above consolidation, taking out new highs, and the red ADX line is over 30. So for all of you fellow Forex traders, make sure that you're trading ones that have clean trading lines that are taking out new highs with an ADX confirmation over 30, and leave alone those that are inside the previous day's ranges. For those of you who trade the S&P E-mini, the ES, one of the things that I like to do whenever I'm trading this, even scalping for intraday trading, is to first pull up this three-day, 10-minute chart, and that gives me a quick top-down look at where the congestion is. And what I mean by that is simply, these are the regions within which we're not likely to see heavy institutional buy or sell volume. So I like to focus my trading on the ES outside of immediate support resistance, and I do that initially by looking at the three-day chart. For example, here the best place to sell this would be under, say, 1328 and a half or so. Best place to buy would be over the 1341 and a quarter. Uh, trading inside this immediate range is not really a good idea because that's where you've got the uh, least certainty in terms of volatility to move outside of the current immediate trading range. For ES day traders, of course, we want to use the one minute tick chart and focus your energy on the first opening hour of the day, specifically when you see bear cup breakdowns, the bearish cup breakdown that continues to move down, say three to six ticks below that as the sell with a stop loss at three to six, depending on your style and how many contracts you're trading, you're roughly three to six ticks outside of the media one minute support and resistance region. But first of all, just pull up the three day chart and see if you are inside previous day's ranges. Uh, and if so, trade more conservatively, lighter. Uh, I like to focus my heavier trading on outrange days and high volatility sessions that are most likely to produce a strong move for me, either to the upside for longs or to the downside for selling this. And finally, to save the best for last, the most important rule, no matter what you're trading, whether it's currency pairs or your E-mini or ETFs or equities, Make sure that you look at the opening range of the spiders pre-market. Notice that this chart starts at seven o'clock and that's because I want to see any bearish or bullish cups. I want to see the opening range for the SPY before the market opens. I also like to pull up the NASDAQ pre-market futures chart to give me a directional volatility bias so I can see before the opening bell, are we in up market or down market? And for example, on Friday the 13th, you can see we had a bearish cup and it ended up at the lows, which told me this would be a seller's market on the open. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened all throughout the entire first half of the day in the spiders and the broad markets. So what you want to do is each morning before the opening bell, before 930, are you in a day in which we are above previous day's high or below? 
below previous day's low. And if so, that tells you you've got an in-play day, right? You can see here, just uh, quickly marking out the support resistance, that was previous day's support, this is previous day's resistance. Uh, looking for volatility if the spiders open, preferably in a continuation up move. Uh, but if you have a pivot like we had because of the NAS pre-market futures confirming a down move, that's still a good in-play day because of the energy of the spiders being an open pre-market range outside of previous day's high-low. So either continuation or fade, get ready to play those days and only those days in which the spiders before 9.30 are either up here above previous day's high or down here below previous day's low. Now this requires a lot of patience because frequently the spiders may open inside the middle of the previous day's chart, maybe three days out of every five day trading week. And those are days in which you should at least trade more conservatively or skip trading altogether if you've got less than say four or five years full time experience because those are tougher days to trade when the spiders open inside previous day's high low. It's much easier to trade when they're above previous day's high or below previous day's low starting in the pre-market hours here before the broad market opens. This has been Ken Calhoun, President of Day Trading University with another edition of Trading Blunders. I hope this helps you trade more successfully. I'd like to hear from you. If you want to post on my tradingtalk.com forum with any questions or comments, feel free to do so. And until then, may all your trades be great. I'll see you next time.